It's time for a blast from the past here on the Council of Trent podcast. I'm your host, Catholic Answers apologist and speaker, Trent Horn. I'm speaking with Father Matt Lowry, who is the pastor at the Newman Center at Northern Arizona University. Father Matt Lowry, though I knew him as Matt Lowry, Mm -hmm. youth minister, St. Teresa Parish, which is where I'm going to be speaking actually later tonight. I'm going to be talking about why we're Catholic. And what's really cool about it is that St. Teresa Parish is where I became Catholic. If you have the book, Why We're Catholic, in the dedication page, it's dedicated to that parish, to all the people of that parish who helped me become Catholic. And Father Matt is uh, one of those individuals among many others. So Father Matt Lowry, welcome to the Council of Trent podcast. It's great to be here, Trent. So tell us a little bit more about uh, yourself and your journey to the priesthood and, and what you're doing now. That's great. I grew up in Phoenix and I went to school at ASU. And at the time I was volunteering right. at, thank you. I'm, I'm micromanaging, <laughs> but you helped to micromanage my own faith to develop. So I'm, I'm, I'm paying it back. So I like you, feedback, right? I, so I, when I was going to college, I was volunteering with the youth group and that's where we got to know each other. You were in high school and along that journey, I recognized that I paid attention to what made me happy and it was serving the Lord and helping other people know the Lord. And so that eventually led me to become a youth minister and then to go to seminary. And one year after being ordained a priest, I was sent to the Newman Center in Flagstaff. And I was like, what what do I know about college students? And I realized that God had been preparing me for with seven years of youth ministry to then move into college ministry, which I like to say that everything I learned in youth ministry, it actually works in college. You know, like the the, the talks, the, the techniques, all those things. It's just... People are a little more mature. The more, but we o- still want that. I will tell you this: I'm I'm nostalgic. Like, like sometimes I just wish like I and other adults could just go on a retreat and be treated like teenagers again. Like someone would do a skit, and then I could sit in a small group, and then at the very end there would be an affirmation bag with my picture <laughs> on it, and I would look to see if someone wrote something nice. And then I would hope the girl I have a crush on wrote something, and that would be Laura. And I'd be like, thank goodness my wife affirmed me. She wrote this nice note. But yeah, we still want to, um, I guess, to be helped in our faith in in, in that kind of way. And it, it applies even from teenage years into the college years. Well, I think it, it takes so much energy to reach high school students that, yeah, that if you put that energy towards any other age group, they would totally respond. So what have you seen uh, when you're uh, engaging college students at the Newman Center because one of the questions I always get, I'll go and I'll give talks across the country at parishes, at conferences. This is a question I always get. Uh, hey, Trent, I have a quick question for you. And it's not, it's not a quick It's question. never quick if they say that. Right. I have a quick question for you. I have a son or daughter who went to college and now they're not Catholic anymore. Mm. What do I do? I'm like, this is a question above my pay grade because it's dealing with a personal individual mm. issue rather than here's an argument that I that I need help with, because people are way more complicated than arguments are. But I mean, it's something we hear all the time, right? My son or daughter went to college, now they're not Catholic. And so there's the challenge. Like, what, what have you seen on college campuses when it le- leads up to people either, well, I guess especially good Catholics going, going to a place like NAU, and then after a semester or even a year or two, or even just one semester, they just stop going to mass, so they're not Catholic anymore. What What are you kind of seeing on the ground that kind of leads up to that? Well, I, the good news is there's a few things that families can do to help instill the faith in their young people. Yeah. First and foremost is our own example and our own witness of the faith. That this generation they're very into authenticity, mm-hmm. and so it's they see more of what we do than what we say, and. And so I had one young man, one dad say to me, oh, my child's not going to Mass. And I, I thought to myself, I was like, well, you're not going to Mass every Sunday. Oh, wow. I was like, you're not living the faith. Now, may, that may not be most of these listeners here today, but, but, but you know, it's kind of like... Or maybe you're going, but it's kind of drudgery. Like, yes. you're, the kids can see you go just out of obligation or out of habit. Do you have your own personal prayer life? Do you stop by the chapel to pray? Because we see when things are genuine. If someone wants to join the military, sometimes it's because their father was in the military, or they want to be a nurse because their mom was a nurse. That when we when we live something authentically, it kind of it, it seeps out, that it ebbs out and influences the people around us. And if you're living the faith authentically well... That that joy, that peace, that kindness, it's going to affect the people closest to us, our family members. So do you think sometimes uh, you'll meet 
Catholic college students, uh, or at least students, they'll tell you, oh, yeah, I went to Catholic school. Or, you know, yeah, I used to go to mass, you know, with my parents. But maybe they grew up in an environment where it, it felt kind of inauthentic or everyone's going just because they have to. And then you get to college and suddenly it's like, wow, I don't have to go to church on Sunday. Wow, I can uh, stay up and eat Cheetos and drink chocolate milk on Saturday nights. I had a very uh, wild and crazy college experience <laughs> you, if it's Cheetos and chocolate milk. You know, so um, cho- by the way, ch- chocolate milk in a glass bottle, if you don't dog it until you've tried it, get the stuff in a glass bottle. <laughs> bottle people but you know it's like you have this freedom i I call it and i see even at catholic schools i don't know if you've seen this that people kind of get drunk on freedom is Mm -hmm. that is that something that sometimes well i I think freedom's a good thing right we love it right and i I think what coming into college they may not have experienced the freedom before with the faith that they had to do these things or they went to a, a catholic high school where they just They were forced to drink it down, and they're like, no, thank you. But that's why I love being on a college campus now is nobody has to be there. And so when they come, there's an openness, and God can really do something. Our our first week of school, I had a dozen students say to me different things, different years. One guy said, Father, it's been seven years since I've been to church, but I want to start coming back. Or I haven't gone to church in in two years, Father. How do I get more involved with my faith? What do you think you've done at the Newman Center or what's happening there that prompts these kind of responses? I think we try to live Catholic culture authentically, joyfully, especially with true freedom. People, I saw a young man on campus, I said, hey, how you doing? He's like, Father, I was out of town this week. I was sick. Like, I'm sorry. I wasn't at Mass. I was like, bro, I'm just happy to see you. Yeah. I'm not here with guilt. I want you to know that we're here and you're always welcome. Yeah. And so I think there's we don't always get that from parents who really trying to form and make us do what's good, you know, brush your teeth, all that, that they're pushing it down. And and we reject that. We reject a lot of things in high school from our parents. And so in college, I I do the complete opposite. I was like, Hey, you're welcome to come. I I don't tell them they should come. I help make them want to come. Yeah. I've always thought when people have asked me, you know, how do you help Catholic college, college students stay Catholic? especially. Oh, I think the goal is you're actually to help them become Catholic. You got people who mm-hmm. come to the Newman Center, they're not even Catholic, they're not mm-hmm. Christian, but there's something exciting there. I think it was like a triangle. Like, well, you're a, you a Boy Scout, right? Mm-hmm. Cool, look at this guy. Of course he's a Boy Scout. Were you, were you an Eagle Scout? <laughs> I'm, I am an Eagle Scout. Full Eagle Scout yes. and everything. He could probably rebuild my whole podcast recording set, just like from Popsicle Sticks. Like, <laughs> here you go, I, I, I got the podcast uh, my pocket merit knife, badge. Yeah, yeah right. Um, so, like in Boy Scouts, right, you have the, the fire triangle. Like, what do you need to start a fire? You need, like, fuel, oxygen. Spark. Lighter, because I can't mm-hmm. start it with anything. Uh, so, I think of, like, the, tri- like the Catholic college student triangle. Mm. Like, you need an intellectual foundation, a spiritual foundation, and, like, a, a communal foundation. So, like, what I would say, and, like, get your thoughts on this, to really help Catholic college students, intellectual foundation is, this, we believe this because it's true not just because we like it, because it might get hard. The spiritual foundation is not just because it's true, but it's beautiful, and we enter into relationship. And then communal would be, it's not just me reading books and going to Mass. There's other people that hold me accountable that are part of my community. I mean, I think one of the biggest things that helped my faith to grow, I mean, I was baptized in junior year of high school. I started, uh, I actually, I started with the youth ministry program, I like that you guys did the uh, the wait. Or I think I don't know if you did this. I know Ryan, your Ryan Howe, his successor uh, to youth ministry. He did this the waiting period, where like if you were a high school teen in the youth program, you couldn't become a college volunteer until you had finished. I think it was like your first semester of college. Like you had to kind of go get your own life. I don't know. Did you do that when you were youth minister? Not necessarily, but that sounds wise. Right. <laughs> you you granted dispensations <laughs> for people. But I mean, this idea, I think what helped, you know, when I was in college, like my other core members, other people who mm-hmm. are excited about their faith, like we would go to mass together and then go out to other places. And because I'm young, it's like we go to Sonic or go to Subway. And now I'm like, my tummy, it would not feel good <laughs> if I did that. But do you see that especially like for Catholic college students? I think the communal aspect part, not to be judgmental, but to have like that, you know, warm sense of accountability. What do you think? I I think it is primary in college. It's all about relationships. And so it's friends 
that bring their friends to church or there's a social happening, a dance. Every time we do a social activity, new people come. And that's what starts it. They come for the sizzle, but then they stay for the steak. That eventually they have an encounter with the Lord. So the right. spiritual opportunity, which is different because my parents, you know, they try to give me the Lord, but at a certain point, I have to make my own response. Right. And so on our retreats, we try to create that opportunity. We invite people to come and pray in the chapel, to have adoration time. And then along the way, we're giving them the intellectual formation, which I think is actually really good. It challenges parents because young people have really good questions, and you're yeah. like, I don't know the answers to this. It's like, well, then we need to go learn and, and help direct them to resources and people. But I think it challenges us. Like, I don't have the answers to these questions they're raising. It's like, well, how are we going to, we got to get into it. How are they going to have the answers? So let's learn together. Right. Because otherwise it's like, you know, you're, you're building a precarious foundation where for you, the only thing holding your faith up now is just like habit. And then look what happened with the, with the pandemic. It's like suddenly if you've developed a new habit of not going mm -hmm. to church, that can just that can just settle in. So what are some other, I guess, tips that you would give? Let's start with Catholic parents, and then maybe we can talk about Catholic students sure. themselves. So like you're raising, say, a high schooler. You want him to be on the right path. You want him to stay Catholic in college when he when he moves away. Like how how do you build that up without feeling like you're the overbearing parent? That's a great question. I, have honest spiritual conversations. They did a study recently where they had families who all the children, none of them went to church anymore. Mm -hmm. And you had families where every one of them was still active in their faith. And they said, what's the difference? And they compared all these variables and they said the one thing that stood out was that they had spiritual conversations. And, and I think that well, how do I do that? Well, it starts with just having good conversations. Right. Like, what? tell me you want to get a third piercing. Okay, tell me about that. <laughs> well, right. Why do you think this is good for you? Like, d do our children, do we want to hear their opinion, or we just want them to listen to what we have to say? Right. And so when you, when you engage, and, and maybe you come home and you say, you know, Father said this thing in his homily today, and actually I was reflecting on that, I really struggle with that, and I want to grow in that area, and I'm sorry for the way that I, that affects you guys. What do you think about the homily? And the child will probably say, well, I don't remember. And you say, well, he said this. What do you think about that? Well, I don't know. And you say, okay. But if you have thoughts, I would love to hear them. Right, so you're playing, you're essentially, it's a long game. It's like, okay, I'm not going to try to get everything all neatly tied up in a bow in this one conversation. You're just going to be gracious, and you're asking open-ended questions. You're not a prosecutor trying to interrogate somebody. You're just trying to say, well, what do you think about this? Because a lot of people, most of us, people don't ask us what we think. They just wait for us to be quiet so they can just yammer on. And I'm guilty of yammering myself. I'm yammering right now in this interview. <laughs> but that's why I want to hear, what do you think about all this? Well, I, we, this generation, they want to be heard. That's why social media is so popular. Totally. and Because they're saying things, and at home they feel like their parents don't want to listen. And so, and, and there is a difference when you're interrogating versus just simply, you want to talk about it? And, and they say, not really. And you say, that's okay. okay. You don't have to, but if you want to, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And eventually you create a child that actually can stand on their own two legs right. and, and, be, and think rationally and articulate them. You're actually helping them. Because they're getting practice telling you what they think and why they think that. And you're just, mm -hmm. you're giving them practice putting the thoughts together. It's like Legos which I just actually bought my kids Legos to entertain them while I'm away, uh, you know, doing all these great interviews with you. But yeah, it's like, how do I put everything together in my mind so it makes sense? And, and we're, Yeah, go ahead. And we're not afraid of any question, right? Because right. they'll ask really hard things. Yeah. Well, mom, what about this? But we have the truth. Mm -hmm. And so we have no fear, like ask the hard questions, let it come out and let's, you know, get into it. Yeah. All right, let's um, transition over to Catholic college students themselves. Mm -hmm. Because I remember college, I had a lot of fun memories in college. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of those would be after life night when we would all go to Applebee's. What did I get? Nachos Nuevos, a strawberry lemonade. And I was still young enough that that didn't just wreck me the next day. <laughs> uh, you know, but, but we would, I mean, we would do um, our, our youth nights together, but then also during the week, you know, go to adoration or go to mass and then play basketball at night or ultimate Frisbee in lot 59. In Arizona, a parking lot. <laughs> yeah, in Arizona State University. Uh, but, so, but also I remember the temptations and the challenges mm -hmm. in college also. Uh, so what is advice you would give like for the students themselves? Like, I'm going to go to college. 
how do I keep my faith strong when I'm, when I'm going to go there? Well, when you start looking at colleges, look at the Newman Center or what other Catholic center or ministry is available to you, which is where parents and people can help too. They're like, hey, do they have a Newman Center? Just, just throw the question out and walk away. Yeah. You know, and they, hey, did you have a chance to, oh, okay. And then you can do your own research. And then, but you go and you visit the Newman Center when you visit the college or time it where you can go to Mass and then meet the priest or meet some of the staff members. Because the more connection we can make, the more likely it's going to stick, whether that's ourselves wanting that connection or our child, we want to get them connected. Yeah. And you can kind of tell if you look at different Newman Centers, like which one is on social media or at least has a website and is doing something like, I mean, you're all, you guys are always doing stuff up at NAU. You have a calendar, you have speakers, events, and you let people know and you know how to reach the students. So they know to, to figure it out. I, I mean, I don't know if you're like doing TikTok dance commercials yet, but <laughs> I don't know if that's the next step of the NAU. We, we've Center. done a few of those. <laughs> well, I mean, the whole point of ca- campus ministry is I, I know that most college students may not be looking for me, but I want them to find me, so I make myself findable. I make them trip over me, whether at the football game. I mean, they don't literally trip, you know. But um, sir, can you please, <laughs> sir, can you please get off the fifty-yard line? Get off the line? ground. <laughs> <laughs> but on social media, people. I was doing marriage prep with this couple. They don't go to mass, and she said, "Father, you keep showing up on my TikTok feed," and I was like. I'm sorry, but I was so happy because she felt. A <laughs> oh my gosh! With how me. did I? How did I get there? <laughs> so, yeah. But no, I mean, and I think that that's in that's important to be able to reach out and mm-hmm. so just like to see what you're what you're picking, uh, when, especially when you're choosing colleges. Um, I guess my last question in this vein is: What advice do you have once you're you're in college and you're just trying to balance everything as a student, and maybe you're feeling overwhelmed by school, or your boyfriend, or your girlfriend? And you maybe feel like you've kind of slipped a little bit in your faith, like you haven't been to mass or, you know, you got other, other stuff's going on. I feel like people don't understand. I don't know if you have any words of encouragement there. The door is always open to the Lord's heart. And maybe we need 20 minutes just to sit in the chapel and talk it out. And God, his arms are always open. And so that's the invitation is to go. And even if it's been a long time as a priest, some of my favorite words are when someone sits down and says, father, it's been a while. It's like, great, I'm glad you're here. And so know that the Lord is there, and we can always go. Amen to that, Father. Well, thank you so much for stopping by Council of Trent Podcast. I hope to make it up to NAU soon one of these days to uh, to do a talk. It's, I feel like it's been a while, but it's always fun to be able to come up. And, it's always great to have it. Students love you. Oh, it's, it's super fun. And I love just going, and especially just going and talking to college students. Like you said, like I'll do my talk, but I always tell the students, oh, my favorite part is Q&A. Like, what is your guys, especially when people invite non-Christian, non-Catholic mm-hmm. students to be able to come. Actually, one of my favorite things to do on college campuses is I'll do debates because the non-Catholic, non-Christian people come to that. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, hey, we're going to have a party. So if, you have, if you're listening, by the way, if you're at a Newman Center, I will come. And I, by the way, I'll find a way. If it's a debate, I'll find a way so that financially it will happen. Don't stress about that. I always make debates happen at a, pub, at a university campus, Catholic, private, public, whatever. Because we, I go mm-hmm. do the debate, and then in the Newman Center, hey, we're going to do after after debate social. Do you want to come by? And then that's you know you have like you said pre evangelization, mm-hmm. ask the questions, get interested, and you kind of start the journey. So I love it. But I will I'll be I will be back soon. And thank you all for uh, listening to this episode. If you like the content we have here, be sure to click subscribe. Uh, I'll leave some links in the description below, and definitely support us at TrentHornPodcast.com. So thank you guys so much, and I hope you have a very blessed day. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you want to help us produce more great content like this, be sure to click subscribe and go to TrentHornPodcast.com to become a premium subscriber. You'll help us create more videos like this and get access to bonus content and sneak peeks of our upcoming projects.